Welcome to Children's Church. So good to see you. I'm Steven. Hi, I'm Daniel. So, Dan, when you grow up, what do you want to do? I want to be an astronaut and build a spaceship to travel to Mars. That's pretty cool. And share the gospel to the Martians. That's really cool. Jesus loves <laughs> you. That's awesome, man. I love that, that whole idea, but I've got good news. You don't have to wait till you're older to do that. You can do that like now. What? Like being an astronaut? No, the part after that. You mean building a spaceship? After that. Meeting a Martian? After that. Oh, you mean the Jesus loves you <laughs> part. Yeah, that part, man. So actually, you can do that now because you, can, you don't have to wait until you're older to teach people the gospel. I thought you had to know a lot about the Bible, like being a pastor or a children's church teacher. And I'm just a kid. No, the way that God sees it is that he has amazing things for you to do even now as a kid, which I think is really cool. And we're going to learn all about that after worship. All right, guys, let's worship. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I know someone who makes me happy. I know someone who makes me dance He's the reason my feet are moving He's the reason I'm gonna lift my hands and clap Hi kids, for the past two weeks we've been looking at the elderly and our parents and how we can honour them. Yes, if we honour our parents and the elderly, God will be pleased. Well remember Jacob, but today we're going to talk about you and you. What? A Bible story about us? But we're just kids. Is that how you think, huh? And we'll fix that soon. That's better. 
Are you going to sing? No. I am dressed to conduct an interview. I know I look like a superstar, and in theory, I could pose and sing like one too. But sadly, we don't have the time. Anyway, what do you think of this look? I'm um, speechless. I know. I amaze myself too sometimes. Then who are you interviewing? Well, as we mentioned, you. Because today we're going to be talking about kids. So, now we begin our interview. So, how would you describe yourself? Um, uh, I'm 11 years old and... Uh, um, Hang on a second. Um, this might help. Let me get you a mirror, a 21st century mirror. How would you describe yourself, Mr. Jacob? Well, I'm young and handsome, but I'm just a kid. Hmm. Good answers. Good answers. But why do you say just a kid? Because I'm still young and I can't do a lot of things like staying up late at night. And my people say that I'm still too young to do those things and I'm just a kid. Well, I suppose that's true. There are some things you can't do. As you said, stay up late. You couldn't uh, go to the jungle alone. You couldn't drive a car. And you may not know how to do advanced calculus yet. But there are many things you can do for God right now. Really? Like me? Yes. In fact, we're going to look into the Bible now, which is filled with examples of young people who did great things because of their faith in God. In fact, why don't we have a look at a young man named Timothy? Tim for Timothy, just like your name. That's right. Amazing people also have amazing names. A boy named Timothy was living in a town called Lystra with his grandma Lois and his mom Eunice. These two women taught Timothy about God. They also taught him to enjoy spending time with God, just like how you can enjoy spending time with your friends. Now Timothy knew a lot about God and had heard that God was going to send a Messiah to rescue people from all the wrong things in the world. But since there weren't TVs or newspapers back then, Timothy didn't know that the Messiah, the Son of God Jesus, was already here. Now there was a very important person that Timothy was about to meet. Have you heard of the Apostle Paul? He's one of the great heroes of the Bible. In fact, he was the man God used to write most of the New Testament. Paul traveled the world preaching and teaching to thousands of people. <coughs> Jacob, there weren't cars and trains back then. Ah, okay. One day, Paul came to Timothy's city and told the people that God had sent Jesus to the world and we can know him and follow him. While Paul was talking to the believers, they mentioned Timothy's name. They shared how he helped people and loved God. Paul knew that Timothy would be a good friend and helper as they traveled to tell people about Jesus. Paul asked Timothy, You are well thought of by the believers. Will you join my missionary journey? Wow! Timothy was just a young person and he was recognized by Paul as a strong example to other Christians. And he followed Paul everywhere so he could learn new stuff about God all the time. And they didn't just stay in that one city. They went on a journey to a lot of cities like Corinth, Greece, Jerusalem, Rome, Athens, Galatia, Troas, Philippi, Apollonia, Berea, Thessalonica, and more. Well, Timothy spent a lot of time with Paul and learned a lot from him. Paul also loved Timothy like his own son, and they started many churches and accomplished great things over the years. One day, Paul was thrown into prison for preaching the good news of Jesus. He wanted to make sure Timothy continued to preach the gospel because sometimes people thought Timothy was too young to teach things to grown-ups. So he decided to write him a letter. This letter is what is now known as the book of 1 Timothy in the Bible. So Paul said to Timothy in the letter, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Kids, those things Paul taught are in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Timothy understood exactly what Paul was telling him. He knew that even though he was very young, he was able to be an example for other Christians to follow. So Timothy continued to preach about Jesus and love people the way Jesus loved them. Timothy understood something very important. 
you're never too young to be an example for others. Other kids, even adults, can learn from watching how you live. If you follow God in all you do and set an example for others, you can change the world. Wow, young people can really make a difference to God. That's right. I'm sure everyone thought Paul was going to pick an adult to join him on his missionary journeys, but instead he chose a young person. Yes, he chose Timothy, a young man. And that's right. Actually, God loves to choose unexpected people to do things for him. Now, Jacob, earlier when you looked at yourself through this phone, you saw just, you know, a kid, an 11-year-old. And I guess that's what other people see too, when they see young people. But God doesn't look at us that way. You know, God doesn't look at our age, our experience, or even our abilities. God actually looks at our hearts and whether we love Jesus and whether or not we're willing to follow him. And you remember how people in Timothy's hometown looked up to him because they saw God's love and wisdom in his life, even though he was young. Does that mean that Timothy was reflecting the image of God to others? That's right, and Paul also told him to be an example to others too. I remember, that was when Paul wrote the letter to Timothy. Exactly, and since we're there, why don't we have a look at that all together. Pay attention now, kids. First, you can be an example to others when speaking. Think about what you say. Do you encourage your friends or do you make fun of them? Do you speak kindly or use bad words when you speak? Do you tell the truth or do you lie to try to look cool? Second, you can be an example to others through your actions. Think about the way we do things with others. Do you obey your parents? Do you keep your promises? Do you show your respect to others? Do you treat others with kindness? Third, you can be an example to others through love. God wants you to love others to show His love. God forgives you so you can forgive others. God heals you so you can pray for the sick. And God provides you with things that you need so you can share with those who are in need. Fourth, you can be an example to others through your faith. God is faithful and He is always with you. Our life is full of unexpected things, sometimes, sad or bad things happen. Instead of being angry and blaming others for what happened, you can trust God is with you and that He is good all the time. Lastly, you can be an example through your purity, to keep your heart close to God, to keep God's word close to you and to have good thoughts. Stay away from things that can hurt you like scary movies, bad video games or music with bad words. Wow, you can do all that. You're never too young to be an example to others. That's right, kids. That's what God calls you to do. God wants you to share the gospel with your friends and to love and encourage them in ways that only you can do. That reminds me of, from, of an article from a newspaper about a boy named Caleb. Caleb is nine years old. He plays basketball and loves to hang out with his friends. During his Sunday school class, his teacher shared the reality of life on the poverty-stricken Central America. Because of the lack of clean drinking water, children die of preventable diseases every day. Caleb was stunned and prayed to God to provide clean water for them. His heart felt that he needed to take action. He took the $20 he had been saving for a new video game, gave it to the cause, and asked his father to match it. He brought the money to Sunday school on the following Sunday. He knew that his $40 wasn't enough to provide clean drinking water for the people in poverty, so he suggested that other families at his church follow his example. The result? They raised enough money to dig two wells in El Salvador. You're never too young to do great things for God. Ask Him to use you for His kingdom, and I'm sure He'll do amazing things in and around your life.
everyone, and welcome to Memory Verse with Actions. This week, we look at 1 Timothy 4.12 and what to do when someone says you're too young. Okay, guys, let's read it together once, okay? In 3, 2, 1. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Wow, good job. All right, let's add some actions to these. I'll start first and you guys can follow after, okay? Okay. Let no one no one despise you for your youth. Despise you for your youth. But set the believers an example. But set the believers an example. In speech. In speech. In conduct. In conduct. In faith. In faith. Love. <laughs> in love. love. In love. And then in faith. In faith. In purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 1 Timothy 4.12 All right, good job. Now everyone, let's join in together and do it once in our loudest voice, all right? Tintin, Kristen, Kingsley? Okay, let's go. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. In purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Good job, guys. High five. Hey, guys. Today we're going to be making a hard pocket and a square pocket. Um, we need to make a guard your heart pocket and a guard against square pocket. Inside the guard your heart pocket is words that you need to guard your heart with, like purity, honesty, forgiveness, justice, and honesty. And in the guard against square pocket, it is things that you don't need in your heart, which is bad thoughts, laziness, selfishness, and dishonesty. Okay, now we're going to make it. So you can download these templates at icahk.tv slash cc slash. First, we will be cutting out the heart pocket template and the square pocket template. And we are also going to cut out some strips of paper. So we're gonna take the heart pocket cut out and stick it on top of the heart. And we're gonna take the rectangle shaped side and stick it on top of the square pocket with glue. After sticking the pieces together, we're going to write down some important words on the piece of paper like some things you want to keep in your heart and after that write down some things that you don't want to keep in your heart. If you need more ideas on what to write, you can ask your parents on what words you should write on the pockets. Then you want to put the strips of paper that you want to keep in your heart in the heart-shaped pockets and the strips of, the pa strips of paper that you don't want to keep in the square pocket. Then on the heart pocket you write guard your heart and on the square pocket you write guard against. Now that you're finished, you can stick it somewhere where you'll always see it, like your fridge or your door, to remind you the, of the things that you need to keep in your heart. Timothy's story really inspired me. I can be a good example to others. I have a mission to accomplish. Nice, I'm really encouraged by hearing what you're saying. What, is your, what do you think you're gonna do? What's like your plan? I'm going to encourage at least one person every day. Nice, man. Well, you were really encouraged by, by Timothy's story, but I'm really encouraged by your story, how the Lord's getting to your heart and really transforming you to love the people around you, that you're not too young to love other people. I hope that you're encouraged by that too. But we also want to have a time where we're able to bless you 
and that your parents can come around and bless you as kids. So if you have your parents, make sure to grab them. And parents, I want you to put your hands on your kids and we're gonna put, pray a blessing over our kids as well. And so repeat after me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so I hope that that's an encouragement to each one of you, and I hope that you can bless your own children all the time, not just once a year or whatever. Do it once a week, or try to find times when you can actually speak a blessing over your children as well. So good to see you guys, and see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.